Welcome to Live Long and Podcast, a Star Trek podcast. I'm Dave Mater, bringing you everything Star Trek, and I'm joined on my left by Josh. Hello. By my lovely fiance Jane. Hello. And my brother Jeff. What up? And uh, we're covering this week uh, Star Trek Discovery episode 14, The War Without, The War Within, following up on the action-packed episode from last week, which was The Past is Prologue. Now they are back from the New Universe, and we're going to get right into this episode. So the way I'm coming at start this, this whole show is, we were talking about this a little bit off-air, how we're all approaching this Star Trek series. Josh, you're coming at it from a first-time viewer. You're not really tied in with the other Star Trek lore. I think you you and I are the antithesis of each other here in the sense that I'm coming at it from a, as a lifelong Star Trek fan, and I am the keeper of the canon. Someone has to be the keeper of the canon in Star Trek that we have to tie this all together. And uh, and and sometimes I think Discovery does this very well, and sometimes they, they go completely off the rails, and I'm going to call them out when they see it. What about you, Jane? How are you coming at this show from? I uh, I am the keeper of the canon as well, but uh, I still think they're gonna they're gonna hopefully write themselves out of their errors, as they kind of just give them the, time. Sh- sh- yes, so I'm giving them a little bit of latitude because uh, they did that with uh, Lorcan. Lorcan. They yeah. did figure out how to like explain yeah. the fact that he wasn't very Federation-y. No. Uh, and that really bothered me when I first watched well, it. I'm like, this is not Federation. It's not Starfleet. Yeah. So, I don't know. And Jeff? I don't care about the the canon. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Just make me a good show. Yeah, just make it entertaining. Like, if they change things, okay. How far can they go before it pisses you I think you they off? already have gone pretty far. But does it piss me off? Not really. I mean... Genesis. What if they blew up Earth? Like, the, all right, the whole thing with the Klingons right now taking over, like, half the galaxy or, like, the quadrant or whatever, that's never happened in Star Trek canon, right? Well, it's never and, been talked about. doesn't well, mean it didn't happen. Well, like, th- there's a bunch of things. The spore drive alone never happened in canon. How, we don't know that. Well... So there's, there's uh, certain things... Okay, as the keeper of the canon, there are some things I will give them a wait and see. Let's see if, they, if they're able to explain this down the road like they do with Lorca, like they do with certain things. But there are other things that I'm like, no, I must protest. Technology and, and holograms and whatnot. The thing like I think about with this show a lot of the time is where, what is their plan for the show? Is it going to be like a three-season show and then boom, that's it? Like, And they somehow figure out a way to kind of like like kind of like with the star trek movies where it's like in its own little universe and then they wrap it all up at the end and it was like oh it never happened like that's kind of where i see it going because like i I think they just want to do their own show and then they'll just wrap it up in a weird like time loop travel whatever at the end and then it never happened and then it never happened like that's kind of where i watch a show that never happened it just seems to me from their writing and like the way they are changing things that like never happened or like were never talked about there are certain things i'm willing to excuse them on like the like we talked about this last week that this is a visual reboot in a sense but they're still taking place in the same reality so a teller a klingon can look different but there are certain things that like i would not be okay with like let's say for instance they like um they killed Sarek. they can't kill Sarek because we know he lives into the time of the next generation spoilers uh, so Unless they go and steal the mirror, Sarek, and bring him mm. back, and he assumes his identity. Right. Okay. But then they got to then like they, they were getting really convoluted. So then we're gonna have to like go back and watch <laughs> episodes and content with like if that was the case with Sarek. Now we're gonna have to say okay, when Mark Leonard was playing Sarek back in 1992, he didn't know he was the mirror Sarek, and mm. he wasn't playing it like he was the mirror Sarek. So like, isn't that really just pissing all over the grave of Mark Leonard? <laughs> Well, I'm not, I'm not saying they're actually going to do that, but I don't like how they've sort of introduced this whole people are dead, but they might not be dead because we might just bring back the mirror version of them kind of thing. If you just look at the show, though, like they don't really like, I don't think they really care about the canon as far as like what TNG set up and like I don't think they care. I think they're like I wouldn't be surprised if they did kill Sarek next episode. I think, I think I don't know what they care about because they seem to really care. So in this episode, they specifically reference Enterprise. They represent. They they reference. Yeah, they did, they yeah. reference I've done that Jonathan Archer. Yeah, because they're like, I think if they could have had their way, they would be like, we're the first Klingons ever going to Kronos, or the first humans ever going to Kronos, right? They would have loved to have said that, but they know they couldn't say that because Ar- when, and when Archer went there, it was no biggie. 
Because in the first episode of Enterprise, they go to the Klingon homeworld to return that Klingon. Oh yeah, the first. Time. Oh yeah, the guy that was running through the field. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, right. And and uh, by that time, we're pretty comfortable with the Klingons, even though it's a prequel show. We've just finished watching Deep Space Nine and Next Generation, where Worf is this really good character and everyone loves him. So Klingons are not presented in that fearful way. When they came back with the Klingons in this show, they're like the Klingons are badass. They are scary. They are going to kill everybody, and they show a lot of that in this, or they talk about it in here, that how bad this war has been going. They for... eat people after they defeat them. Yeah. Yeah. They ate Giorgio. Okay. So before we walk through every episode, maybe just um, a little bit of like how you felt in general about this episode. Josh? I thought it was a very a setup episode for the finale. It kind of reminded me of one of those Walking Dead episodes where they're all walking to the, through the forest talking right before a big battle. And so that, that seems um, pretty accurate, yeah. I don't think it, it didn't have its own sort of uh, capsule story within the episode. It was sort of just dealing with what happened last episode and setting up a few things for next episode. It was a lot of talking, a lot of them catching up with each other, like because they get back to the Prime Universe and they have to catch up with everybody and they have to explain where they've been because it's been nine months for everybody else since they've seen Discovery, yeah. right? Very transitional, but I think they did tell us there's definitely things that advance the story in this episode. Such as? Such as finding out what the Federation had been up to. Uh, I thought at the end of the last episode they were gone, pretty much, and they're not. Wait, I have a question. Where did they get the Admiral from? I, I forget this part. Where did, like, How did she get on the Discovery? In this episode? Yeah. Her and Sarek show up on another ship. Right? Yeah, they, they they transport aboard from another ship that's, like, running away or something, and they're like, this is the best ship we have left, so we're going to take this one over. Is that what's happening? Okay, so so maybe we need to get into the, the specifics of this episode. So so they get back to this, uh, they get back from the Mirror Universe, it's nine months later, and they, they, what they left us with in the last episode was Saru saying, if this map's to be believed, the Federation has been conquered by the Klingon Empire. And then we find out pretty quickly in this episode that's not the case. They haven't been conquered, but it's not looking good, which I felt like was a cheat with the, how they, they ended that episode. They were making me think that there was going to be a time travel angle here. They were, they were going to have to undo what, what has happened here, but it doesn't seem to be the case, right? No, for sure. And I, I, I do like the way that they tied it back to the, the start of the season where we s sort of saw this deterioration or this rivalry within different factions of the Klingons and now that's sort of the wedge that they can use to beat them we know they're not united we know that they're you know they're fighting over who gets what from the Federation and I think that's a, an angle that they're going to have to exploit in order to beat the Klingons okay so let's let's go through this episode in chronological order recap or let's do a little recap. recap okay so we start this episode with Ash Tyler which is understandable because we didn't see him at all in the last episode the whole the whole them the last two episodes I think yeah, definitely Perhaps. not in, in the in this last episode. We don't even see his face at all. They don't touch on him at all. And I felt like this whole cold open was all about trying to set up the fact that Ash Tyler is a is a human and he's back. And they, they're they're really trying to sell us this idea that he is not the Klingon double agent anymore, even though he technically is just a Klingon who's been programmed to think he's human. That they they want the audience to accept him or or something. Do you feel that? I think that's what they're trying to do. I mean, if I'm a Klingon double agent and I kind of bugged out and didn't work and accidentally gave up that I was a Klingon, the first thing I try to do would be to convince everyone that I was human again so I could go back to being a double agent. So I don't know if I buy it, but I think that's what they're trying to do. Do you think he's still Vok? I think he's still Vok. Or I... that Vok is still in his body ready to be activated again when they need him. And I think that's sort of what happened when Laurel did her little mind electricity thing that she was like resetting him like turning him off and turning him back on like the IT people would tell you to do well okay they, so they say here they go is he human or Klingon to the doctor and she goes neither mm -hmm. both she so, might as well just have said I don't know I am I am not happy with the way that they are trying to sell this Ash Tyler either he was a Klingon who thinks he's human or he's a human who's got his mind screwed around or or he, he's something else but, but explain why, it to me I can't the medical guys figure this out like why why is this such a conundrum i, I don't know you why know? i'm pretty they, comfortable with it they he's klingon that was transformed but they don't explain it to like human that. form yeah they mm -hmm. did i, think, I agree uh, with james he's, he's 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 klingon inside they broke his bones moved his skin da 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 moved, removed our organs and put his put ash's psyche on top morale killed ash our uh, vox psyche 
So that's all that is okay, left but why, why couldn't they explain it like that in such simple terms? That's I, how I took it. I feel like if you go back and really look at that dialogue. It was they, quick. They make it quick. They don't yeah. want you to think about it for too long. No, no. They, you know, They're just punting it for later. Right. Maybe it's a big reveal like that. Like there, there's something like that's why I feel like whenever they show like the surgeries too, there's always like quick flashes and they don't want you to see too too much. I think there's a like a reveal coming that we don't quite. I don't even know what to speculate on it yet because it's so it would be so weird to me. It's like it seems like it is Ash Tyler, but Vok like he, they even said in this episode like they took his organs out and like put them in Ash Tyler's body, but like I don't and filed down the tips of his fingers. And they, they, they talk about that in this episode a little Klingons bit. Klingons have multiple redundant organs, so they had to make them human. Right. Two hearts and Two three, hearts. three lungs and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So then... I think they're moving on. So, I think it's settled. All right. So then they, they have, he has this whole conversation with Saru. He's like, oh my God, I killed Dr. Colbert. I did all these horrible things. And Saru just gives him a pass. He goes, you're not Vok. You're, you're, I, that's not who I see. You're totally off the... They're, they're not your crimes. He, but he goes, I can access his memories. I consider this guy a major security threat. One thing that kind of bugged me was that Sarek can somehow do his mind meld with Burnham to make sure what they're saying is the truth. Why can't he just mind meld with Tyler and find out what, what he what his truth is? Well, nobody asked him to, I guess. Uh, but why didn't they? Like, they're using it as a tool throughout this whole series. Like, they've done it several times, and now they have this guy, and they don't know if they can trust him. And you've got this Vulcan dude who can do a mind meld on board. Why don't they say, hey, check if he's really Ash Tyler? Sorry, it was Saru, right? He came on board. Oh, it was almost like a mind rape, I thought, initially, because he's like, I have to do this. Yeah, and then later on, he tells Burnham he did it to her without her knowing. Ugh. So, yeah, why can't he do that to, with Ash? Yeah. Okay, so then we have the so then we come back and uh, up to the cold open and now um, we have uh, Cornwall shows up with with Sarek. Yeah, they do this this mine. They're they're immediately distrustful because I guess they saw the the wreckage of the ISS discovery they talk about, right? Which how, how did they get what? So when they got to the Prime Universe, what did they do? They somehow got destroyed by Klingons, but it's not clear why or how or what happened. Do you think we're gonna see that later? I think Tilly was the captain. She's not a very good captain, so she just screwed up. No, I'm kidding. She's like, we're in some universe we don't know what to do. Let's attack Klingons. It's kind well, of what that, would, that would be what they would do if they were in their own universe. So True. I don't know. They, they, so they, this wasn't Lorca's ship. This was Tilly's that came through, that was switched. Yeah, because she was the captain of the Discovery. Yeah, and the mirror okay. Tilly was the other captain. And some of the people who are on Discovery are on Mirror Discovery, and some of the people aren't. If you're the Terran Empire, why would you call your ship Discovery? Well, that's a good question. You think they would call it like Conquest or <laughs> yeah, something, yeah. right? Or you know, they, they. It's weird how they have all the same names. But we're not going to get into a mirror universe oh. thing right now because we're out of the mirror universe. It's most we're out, almost out of the weeds in the mirror universe. It's just a question I had. So <laughs> it's a lot of things I think about. So then they talk about Lorca's dead and what happened to the real Lorca, and she and Cornwall goes, "Oh, I guess my Lorca, my Gabriel's gone forever." We don't don't, don't, have it. <laughs> don't think so. I think he's coming back at some point. Uh, he's not dead. Um, okay, so then we get into the whole thing. Everybody hates Tyler. He tries to go to the mess hall. Nobody will sit with him, not even the nerds. And, like, they're all, except for Tilly, she eventually breaks the ice and says, you know what, I'll sit with you. And then Robot Eye, she says she'll come, and then everybody else. <laughs> Robot I, I, Eye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever her name is. Lieutenant Helmsman. Right? Um, well, did you guys like this or not? No. I didn't like most of the Tyler stuff in the episode. Uh, I mean, most of it was painful. It, it was very much like Josh said, a Walking Dead. Oh, God. I just got, like, I, you know, Walking Dead, I hate watch. I, I skip through a lot of it because it's just so nonsensical. And that's how I felt about most, like, the first half of this episode. Yeah. Most of the Tyler stuff. I felt like, yeah, they had to, like, pay off all the emotional stuff they'd just been through in the Mirror Universe. Now, this was them catching their breath, this mm -hmm. whole episode, right? And, like, having these conversations they haven't had time to have yet, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I could see that scene doing where they all go and sit with Tyler, and I get what they're trying to do with the emotional side. We're forgiving him. But maybe it's trying to give off the impression that a little time's gone by. Everyone on the ships had a chance to hear about, oh, he was actually a Klingon and a blah, blah, blah. And they figured it out, and they're, they're able to forgive him. Because otherwise... 
how would they all know what actually happened so quickly unless something time's gone by or something I like that? I wouldn't trust this guy for a second. They, they do say his career is over. He's not going to be a Starfleet guy. They do make mention of this mm-hmm. in the episode. I'm like, why isn't he in the break? Like, I can't, even if you think he's not dangerous right now, the chances of him being, like, reactivating are not... What did Saru give him? I thought he gave him something. A tracker? Remember? He gave him, I'm not going to reduce your freedom, but here you go. I think he just gave him, like, a little wristband to open doors, but it only opens, like, certain doors. Oh, like, he can't get into his... confidential... Ac- he can't get access to confidential areas. He's, okay. like, a civilian. Just... Kind of like how you'd expect Burnham to be, but she can go anywhere. Mm. No. Right. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. Then they... they they go to Starbase One. They're going to go meet up at Starbase One. They find out it's been obliterated. Okay, where was Starbase One exactly? I initially thought it was Earth, but then definitely it's not. I confirmed that be, later. Right? No, no, no. They, not Earth. I read an article earlier, and they mentioned how many AUs it was away from Earth. I guess that's, I don't know what that it's means. It's a measurement. Yeah. Of, it's a measurement. And someone did the math, and it's twice the distance from Earth as Pluto. Okay. So it's close to Earth in... Like Star Andromeda Trek, you know, but, like but far enough away. Yeah, but I mean, they should still be worried that they're getting close. But so if it's twice as far as Pluto, that's pretty close. In in Star Trek terms, yes. Yeah, when exactly. You, when you go faster than light, it's pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they say eighty thousand people were on this space station, and they say that we're picking up two hundred and seventy Klingon life signs, and that's it. So two hundred and seventy Klingons killed eighty thousand Federation people. Well, that's mm-hmm. all the Klingons that are left. Oh, like a force could have come and left. Yeah, exactly. They got to move on and mark more territory. Um, maybe, but that's a pretty big base to take over, um, isn't it? I do think that you are kind of driving at something that we don't. I don't like the crew doesn't really know what's going on, really, yeah. and uh, the audience doesn't know what's going but, on either. But Sarek and the Admiral should have, you know, filled us in a little bit. You so know, how are they cling on doing this? If they're divided, the houses are divided. Why are they all why are the, why so is, much better than the Federation? Because they have cloaking device. They have cloaking okay, devices. Yeah. Is that why? But that's now not an issue. But you would assume that this base was taken over before they figured out the cloaking issue. Well, cloaking, you, you turn up. And you're there. Hello. No, but, but now that the discovery's like back, they know how to combat it. Yeah, and they do give us this little summary of what happened in the war. They say like, oh, we lost this, and all these places I had, I've never heard of. In Star Trek lore, so they can't be that important, and uh, it's not like they're like, oh, they they destroyed Andoria, or or they killed, yeah, they destroyed Mars Colony, or nothing. All these names and places they're throwing out are, are not significant in Star Trek lore that I know of. So um, I'm like, okay, so they they wiped out this base, and I'm just like, I wrote down, this never happened. Like in start in the I, as the keeper of the canon, I must tell you that. But Kirk is only ten years later, and and they this if they if if they had this kind of relationship with the Klingons based on this history, uh, his interactions with the Klingons are much more. Do we know? You might know this. How many? Uh, I think you do. How many um, starships are in Kirk's time? Well, I know that there are ten, approximately ten Constitution class vessels, including the Enterprise and the Defiant and the Constellation. And a few others um, that are all that con- the, the enterprise type ship, right? Um, plus, there's a, a number of other vessels like uh, that we're learning Discovery and Shenzhou and all. It these just other. seems to me like they're making the Federation a little bit larger than I ever thought it was in the original series. Well, you like, think about the Starfleet. The Federation is at least four planets, right? It's Earth, Vulcan, Andoria. Vulcan, Andoria, Andoria and Tell and the Tell where the Tellarites are from. So, Tellar, I would assume. I think that is right, Tellar. Tellar, right? So, four species against one species, you think it would be an easy fight. I mean, two things to Jane's point, talking about the Federation being so much larger. That's actually, when you guys were just talking there, I don't know the other stuff, the other Star Treks, but I know that, you know, you're talking about all these bases that have been destroyed that you've never heard of. Maybe the Federation was a lot larger before this crazy Klingon war, and maybe there was all these bases that were destroyed and never rebuilt. Maybe, mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, but the, Kirk's time. Yeah. Just, this, this is the stuff that, that, that does had. bother me about a show, the show, especially in, a, in an episode like this that is so, like, just them talking and them saying that this is what's happened and this is what's happened. And I'm like, you guys are taking this a little far for me. 
but I digress. I think it would be interesting to rewatch the Klingon episodes of the original series for next week. See exactly what they said about the Klingons. Yeah. It's not that many episodes. I think Kirk is relatively really nice to these Klingons that he meets later on, considering how bad these Klingons yeah. seem. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, okay, so then we have Cornwall goes to talk to Laurel in the brig. She's like, we're getting, we're getting our asses kicked by the Klingons. What do we do? And she was like, Takuvma, this is what he wanted. If, if, all, if, if all we do is unite the Klingons under one rule, then it's succeeded. And she's like, that's totally what's not happened. The Klingons are completely divided. All the houses are, are just using us as cannon fodder and trying to take over bits and bits here and there, right? And my favorite line was, uh, she goes, Takuvma was an ignorant fool, and you're kind of stupid to, to worship him. And she says, well, you, you have to conquer us. You have to conquer the Klingons or we'll never relent. That's the only way to beat us. But that is pretty uh, consistent with Klingons. You have to like show that you're a warrior to re- get the respect. Right? It's right. Us, right. Us. Which is leading into what Burnham was saying in the first episode, the Vulcan hello. You have to, you have to earn the Klingons' respect with, with force and force, violence yeah. and making yourself seem not weak, I guess. Yeah. But it's also consistent with uh, next-gen Klingons. They're always in disarray, in my opinion, right? Well, Aren't they? in the time of Worf, yeah, we have the Durasses and the Gaur- and Gauron's faction, and they do have a civil war. The Klingons do like to fight each other. Mm-hmm. That, they've never gone into it quite this in-depth in Star Trek, like naming all these different houses quite as explicitly as they've done only in this short season of Discovery. Like We've learned more about... The internal workings of the Klingon Empire, I feel, in this show than we have in all of Star Trek to date, mm-hmm. or it's cl- or maybe like you know if you put them on a scale, yeah. this just this season versus everything else, it's almost even. Yeah. Right. Well, you don't agree. No, oh, we learned a lot in Worf's time. We did. What, we like did. What? Uh, well, like he said, with the Duras and, and all the the Civil War and when Picard got in there and. Yeah, but we didn't. We only knew about those two houses. Maybe, yeah. but, but the twenty-four houses. No, we didn't know about that. No. All right, all right. That was okay. never. That was never called out. Maybe most of them were killed by that time because of the civil the civil war that's happening right now. There were now. lots of houses. They just they alluded to that. Yeah, but they don't talk about it very yeah. in depth. Now they're starting to get into more of that mythology there. And so anyway, in the last line they say in that scene is, "How much do you know about Kronos?" So this is setting up that we have to go to Kronos and we got to take the fight to the Klingons. Which I, I'm okay with because it kind of reminds me a little bit of like World War One and World War Two. The theory being, if you de- destroy the capital in a war, that the rest of the nation kind of falls, right? Cut off the snake. Like that's why the Germans try. We're always like, we have to invade France and we have to take over Paris. And if we can take over Paris, we we win the war, at least against the French, right? You know, within a matter of weeks. And that's true. That ha- that's what happened. Well, in World War Two, World War One, it didn't work. The Schlieffen plan, but that's I digress. <laughs> anyway, um, so we get this scene with um, is this where Ash Tyler now talks to um, to Burkle Burnham and they have their little moment together? You can together? Just skip that. Yeah, we can not talk about this scene. Well, I it think was we have painful. to. We, it's our duty as, uh, as, as 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 chroniclers of this show to talk about. What exactly, how boring was this scene? And pretty I, friggin' bad. Pretty painful. Yeah, I mean, I like that it it sort of showed Burnham's reason for being pissed off at Ash Tyler, not so much about um, the fact that he was a Klingon, and now he's apparently not, but more about, you know, I told you to tell me if you're, at the time, thought it was PSD, PTSD. If that gets too bad, tell me, and he kind of hid it from her, mm-hmm. and that's what caused this to happen. And then it also comes out that she's got PTSD now from him trying to kill her, which honestly the first thing I thought of was like an abusive relationship where the guy's like drunk or something and, you know, hits his wife. And then later on, even if he's like reformed and everything, you can't get that out of your head that that person did that to you. Interesting. Yeah, no, like, like I, I think Ash Tyler should be just locked up. I don't, think, I don't think he should be talking to Michael Burnham. I don't think she should be entertaining that he's okay. They want us to like, I like this actor and I don't dislike his character. But like they keep, they're like they've they've done this like this thing with this character, and now that they they're just trying to backpedal as hard as they can, 
yeah. to try to like get him back to kind of where he was in the the fabric of the show before this reveal. Yeah, and to me it kind of makes it like, what was the point? Of, there's got to be something else because what was the point of this whole Vox slash Ash Tyler story if now he's just back to normal? Like it was just a little detour to distract us from things for a while now. Everything's hunky dory. Yeah, and, and he, but he, he, like again, he's not the real Ash Tyler, right? No. Well, we don't even know if there was a real Ash Tyler. Yeah, there was. There has they to said there was. They they captured him. They that's where they got his mind. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I just wrote during this scene, what is happening? Actually, I, I just looked at my notes and I saw I wrote twenty percent occupied. I thought that was interesting. At one point earlier, they said that Federation was twenty percent occupied by the Klingons. Do you remember that? Vaguely, a lot, what? lot less than it seemed at the end of the last episode. Oh yeah, completely. Like, it was complete bait and yeah. switch, right? And then, uh, then they have this this meeting, right? What do you, like we're gonna jump into Kronos? What are they gonna do when they jump into Kronos? They're gonna map a cave. It seemed like they were gonna blow up a bunch of volcanoes and blow up the planet. That was what I got from it. They blow up the planet? I think so. Well, I no. So I just I literally just watched this, and what what they're saying is that it somehow conveniently has like a hollow you know, area underneath the surface, like of caves. So they're somehow going to get under there and use some sort of scanning device to to be able to map the entire planet, know where their military bases are, and then bomb, yeah. strategically bomb the military bases. I think the bomb the whole planet is the other thing that we... That's what the Federation wants to do. But Giorgio wants to blow up all the volcanoes on Kronos. <laughs> okay. That's what's going to happen. Let's get to the... Okay, and then... Um... Yeah, we have to. We need, she, we need more spores to do this, which sets up the fact um, that we have to go grow more. I really don't like coming up. You didn't like that? No, me neither. Why? Why didn't you like that part? It's Genesis. Well, this could be a progenitor to Genesis. Yeah, it's terraforming. Um, I, um, it was pretty fast, pretty convenient that they had all the terraforming ter- terraforming equipment on board, and I it thought was... Genesis happened in, in days, where this happened in hours, and like. Why was Genesis such a magical thing, whereas we had it 10 years prior? Yeah, this didn't is, make sense. This is pretty much like the best crew ever. I mean, they just figure out ways to, like, you know, get out of, you know, the mirror universe. Oh, we're going to, in a, you know, a blink of an eye, we're going to terraform this moon. Like, they, they're a pretty darn good crew, this crew. You know? Well, it's a little I, ridiculous. Did they fully, With ensigns to boot. Did they fully terraform no, this? Not ensigns. Um, you mean Stamets? No, no, no. Tilly. She's a cadet. cadet. She's not even an ensign. She's lower than an ensign. Okay. Did they um, fully terraform it? I thought it was just a small little garden, I, sort of. It was I, a whole I, moon, I, but I yeah, o- yeah. I was okay with it. As the keeper of the canon, All right. I'm giving this one a pass. All right. I just thought it was too easy. Like, why didn't they make it a little more Well, like, yeah. if this difficult. is a, a fine... These spores are a finite resource, and if they're this easy to grow why wouldn't you have a few of these setups growing them i think the issue is you don't want them to fall into the wrong hands i think they made a mention that someone was against growing them organically that's why we only grew them on the ship before now but we're desperate but couldn't any science test in theory figure this out in theory right yeah. well we also know what giorgio really wants too right do we and that's the spores she even said it in the last episode where she was talking to Burnham. She wanted Burnham to trade her for the spores for, for the, you know, to let her go and go back to the Mirror Universe or spare their crew. I forget exactly oh, what it right. was. I Remember? forgot all about this. Remember? That, that, well, of course, her, her ISS Sharon was powered by spores, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, so like, now that Giorgio's captain, you're going to you're gonna see some altered motives come, come into play big time. Okay. Wait, George was captain? I didn't know we got there yet. <laughs> oh, well, we're just about there. Okay, so then we get this reveal. George, well, so they, they, Sarah goes talks to George. Cornwall goes talk to George. I think Michael Burnham goes and talks to her, you know, in this episode. She's salty. She's not happy that she's on this ship. Um, she's pissed off. She gives, she says, like, uh, she wants to eat Saru as soon as she sees him. Uh, she's a bad egg, right? Like I was saying last episode, she's a, she's a really bad egg. Shouldn't work with this woman at all. But I guess what they were trying to paint here in this episode was that Sarek and Cornwall have gotten to this desperate point where they feel like they need her. Mm-hmm. I still don't understand. I think they're willing t- 
to go to lengths that the Federation wouldn't do. And that's what the preview for the next episode was uh, kind of showed, right? Where, like, Michael Burnham's like, oh, we only have our principles. And basically inferred that the Admiral and Sarek are willing to blow up Kronos. That's what I got out of it anyway, just in the quick the mm-hmm. quick preview. And that's what I think's going to, at least that'll be the plan, like, I think. Yeah, like, like she's an, well, why, you want an ally that's already defeated your enemy. Why can't, yeah, why be my can't, friend. But why do they need her to take become the captain? Why can't they just get advice from her? Because that was her terms. That she wanted freedom if she would tell them how to beat the Klingons. And the Kling, and the, the how do you beat the Klingons exactly? She told she the volcanoes the on vol- Kronos. Yeah, use yeah. the use the volcanoes. They want to blow up like the majority of the planet using the volcanoes, and that's basically they inferred that's how she beat the Klingons in the Mir universe. She's she's like, what do you know about Kronos, right? Well, there's volcanoes on on Kronos. Uh, like they didn't infer how she did it, but that's basically what she was saying is that that's probably what they did in the mirror universe is they blew up a whole bunch of volcanoes on Kronos and then just put like the Klingons were screwed after that. That's why you saw Vok on an ice planet with Sarek in the mirror universe. Right. That's mm-hmm. not, that's not Starfleet. No, exactly. No, it's, not. it's not. What blowing up volcanoes on Kronos? Yeah. No, that's why Michael Burnham was like, we only have our principles, right? But- like Sarek. It's not even Vulcan. Like that's that's not even Vul- no. consistent with Vulcans. It's not logical to like blow up your enemy if they're gonna blow up you you up. Not that not, everything I know about the Vulcans is no. Like that's well, all at war. It is. It's this is not terrorism on their part. They're at war. Right. Yeah. I, I don't. I'm not necessarily. It's just inconsistent with what I know about Vulcans, especially. That, that this would even Vulcans. Um, don't even like to eat meat even if they have to like you know like they're they're pacifists at 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 the at the strongest core and for Sarek to get to this place where he's like well it's a lesser of the two evils we'll use Georgiou to you know defeat the Klingons and blow up planets and uh, presumably you know kill civilians and maybe that's why they had to show us like look they just killed 80,000 people in this place like, this is getting it's dire we're our backs against the wall we have to do something yeah I mean I, I wrote the Joju plan is dumb, um, like the plan to trust her, because she's literally like a known to at least to the people that know who she is. She's a genocidal war criminal who was like eating beings that they consider like sentient, intelligent parts of the Federation. Um, and literally she's the exact opposite of everything the Federation stands for. Like she's worse than the Klingons are in terms of, you know, war and, and the limits they're going to go to. And I think it is that sort of, you know, if we give up who we are, then why are we even fighting the war? We're like, well, why, why would we go to these lengths? Um, and I mean, they're trying to say, oh, it's desperation, or maybe they think that since she's uh, she's racist against aliens that she won't betray them or anything. But like, I could see her easily betraying them for, her, for herself if she thinks she can get her back to the, the mirror universe. Right. I just like, like Cornwall, did Cornwall call up the Federation president and ask for permission yes. for this plan? the council. Yes, yeah, that's where Sarah went. Yeah. That's where he went? He, but went he to- said that specifically to her, yeah. Yeah. He they to they the, consulted the council, Federation Council. The so Federation yeah. Council gave them an okay on this? Yep. I don't remember that part. But the but. official plan of sneaking in the caves and figuring out all their military defenses, like that's the official plan. The real plan is going to be Giorgio laying waste to Kronos, I mm. think. Yeah, that, I think uh, the, the, the Federation knows that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think well, so too. Just the ship, the, ca- the crew of the Discovery doesn't know that yet because then they probably wouldn't do it. But they have to, okay. So if, if if there's an order from the Federation Council and the, and the president of the Federation, like the crew of the Discovery is going to defy that. Burnham would. She's a mutineer. Well, they don't. They can they can deal with her. They like the they, you know she was only out because Lorca allowed her to be out. And now he's gone. So why is she still out? No, exactly. And it doesn't. It looks really weird that Georgiou's all of a sudden back and the person who like defied her orders. And I'm surprised they didn't try to cover that up. Like, oh, Georgiou said that you didn't actually. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. Is 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 this how they're going to get? Is, George, is Burnham going to get reinstated into Starfleet now? Um, yeah, and I think I said last week that that could happen. Yeah, it seems like that's where it's heading. That Georgiou and if Georgiou, who was dead, do you think Burnham wants to see the memory of her friend? Get soiled by this Giorgio? Well, I'll do you one better. Um, because Giorgio is now the Myriad Giorgio, and she's crazy and evil, yeah. right? She does something crazy evil that's going to happen probably, right? That's going to affirm that her mutineer 
uh, role was justified, mm. right? And that's how she gets ex- like that's how it gets, uh, was that right? yeah, that's how everything goes on, you know, pretty good, right? Don't forget about Robot Eye. She she was there, mm. and she remembers she she saw the whole thing. She saw the whole mutiny, and so did Saru. They were both uh, they were in both places. Right, but to fed the Federation, if, if like yeah, like they would have to come forward and be like, no, 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 no. But they like Michael Burnham, right? So they would lie. Yeah, and couldn't Georgie just say, oh, that was an act in private? She we planned that she was going to pretend to to mutiny for some reason. I guess I guess this is all possible. Um, yeah, I'm, like it's it, okay, like so. Based on that, I'm kind of excited now to see where this goes. Like, is Georgie just going to kill a whole lot of Klingons? And uh, we're, you know, including civilians, presumably. Yeah, exactly. And the only people who know that Georgiou isn't Prime Universe Georgiou is, there's like four people, right? It's Burnham, Saru, Sarek, and... The transporter guy. The transporter <laughs> guy, and Cornwell. So it kind of reminds me of the movie Face Off, where, like, he takes his face off and becomes Nicolas Cage, but only, like, three people know that. So if she just kills those five people, then as far as anyone knows, she is Georgiou. I don't think they're going to do that. Sick plug. But yeah, it just seems <laughs> like a it just Wait. seems like a dumb plan that nobody knows that she's actually evil. She could just kill four people and she could assume Georgiou's identity. Wait, Robot Eye doesn't know it's the real it's the mere Giorgio, but Robot Eye probably is going, "Hey, what the hell?" Well, you saw when they right? you saw when they brought her in, Robot Eye um, smiled and she was like, "Oh, I'm so happy Georgiou's alive." Oh, so she actually does think it's the real Georgiou. She does. Yeah, you oh, can tell okay. just by the way she played it. Oh, okay. I didn't re- right? I didn't and, and you can pay see Saru is like, "Oh, no, I don't like this at all." And, and Burnham doesn't seem too keen about this plan. Do you think they can turn her? Like I remember at one point in the episode Tilly talking about her dark halves and being aware of how you can turn this way that way. I mean, she still is Georgiou, like Do you think I, she be redeemed? She can be redeemed. No. No? no, I don't think it's so. not happening. Not no. at all. I think if anything, they're going to somehow redeem Tyler or, or maybe even Lorel, but not Georgie. I see a no. sacrifice coming for Tyler. I, I see like you know something where Vok takes over and then Tyler mm. takes back over, and somehow like Tyler so, like you know. So it's like Gollum Smeagol kind of thing. Yes, mm. yes. Very. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to see something. A lot of movies. And I was watching yeah. this uh, After Trek, which by the way is the most unwatchable Star Trek or oh. after show or any kind of after show ever. It is it's just the host. It's horrible. He's he and I like Matt Mira. Like he does a podcast with Scott Mosier. He's hilarious on. He does Nerdist and stuff like that. Yeah. But I I like Matt Mira, but not in this. Like it's he, yeah. The format's bad. The format's bad. He's not good at hosting it. Yeah. He's, he's he's clearly not comfortable on TV. Yeah. It's not his thing. But anyway, so they were. They the were fact that you don't it. like it and it's Star Trek says something. It says I can't even watch a few minutes of it without yeah. just like completely checking out. So you're saying that rather than watching After Trek, you should listen to Live Long Podcast. You should listen to this or any of the other podcasts that are covering the show. Not that, by, the, by any means. But um, they were talking about on, on this show, they, every week, you know, and the thing with these after shows and these recap shows is that they, is that they really do like to, um, I was going to say suck the dick, but like uh, fillet is a nicer way of saying it. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. They like, like they just how, how much they love all the actors. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is a fine cast, but they go on and on at length about... And they laugh and laugh and laugh. They laugh and laugh. But they go on and on about Mary Chifo as Laurel. Right? And that she's like the best ever. Like, how good is she on the show? I think she's fine. Like, does anyone else think she's like the best actress on Discovery? No. It's hard to tell when she's wearing that much makeup <laughs> and talking really slowly all the time. Yeah, no. No, it no, wouldn't be fine. like my she's my fine. top choice for acting on the show. John, like in the last episode, Jonathan Frakes was on it, which actually made the show a lot better. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Oh, they need to bring Mary Chifo on this show next season and make her part of the main cast." I was like, "Do we? Is anybody asking her this? Is she from something else that she's?" No, I don't. Think... I don't know her. Like, I think she's a Canadian she... actress, and you know, right. the mm-hmm. show's made in Toronto, and um. Anyway, it just... I, they don't I, film it in space? They don't film oh, it. Oh, man, that just ruined well, it for me. Well, it's the only Star Trek show not to be filmed in Los Angeles, which I think it does set it aside. Um, okay, one last note here I have from the episode is that they say, we will be the first humans to go to Kronos since Captain Archer 100 years ago. And Enterprise made such n- not a big deal about going there at all. This was, like, we are going to the Death Star. We are going. We're going to blow up the Death Star. We're going to end the war, right? Are you? Do you think that we are still dealing with this Klingon war in season two? Because next week, season finale. This is the end of Discovery season one. 
and then we got to sit on this for about a year, right? Before we uh, we see where they go next. I don't know how they're going to wrap it up so quickly. Like, I mean, I can see them wrapping it up in terms of blowing them up or whatever, but how do they deal with the fallout? Like, are there Klingons left? Are there Klingons who, you know, come over to the Federation? We know there's going to be Klingons left unless this takes place in an alternate universe. So how does that happen? Well, okay, so by the time of Kirk, they're in a cold war with the Klingons. They're not in an, an active state of war. It's very much like the Russians and the U.S., which is what the Klingons initially were. They were an analogy for that. So by the time they get to the original series, that's kind of the state of affairs. They're kind of in this, like, they're working against each other. They're having proxy wars where they're, de- they're influencing different alien species. They're bidding over mining rights and farming rights and all colonization and things like that. It gets very political, not super interesting later on in terms of, like, just fighting and war and all that kind of stuff. So... They have to defeat the Klingons in a sense of, like, pushing them back, but not, of course, wiping them out. They still have to be a pretty formidable force by the time of that show. And Kronos can't be blown up. No, no Kronos is still... No, no, no. Now, they've never shown Kronos very clo- very in-depth in any of the Star Trek. Yes, like, they have. I've seen many screenshots of, like... Okay, green, yes, we've green seen planet, Kronos. Right, Green Planet. With it, the buildings it's and usually, the... Well, it's been portrayed a few different ways. In Enterprise... It was portrayed as kind of a cold planet, like an icy kind of mountainous planet. Yes. Um, they did that in the movie, too, Into Darkness. And when they went there in Into Darkness, which is still the same planet, it's just, it's an alternate universe, but it's not, it's still the same place. Um, it's it's portrayed as a mountainous kind of planet. Cold as cold. well. Cold. Yeah, they're wearing like big jackets and it's kind of snowing and, yeah. I'm more thinking TNG with just cityscapes and like. Well, in TNG, they showed the first city, like the, the capital city. Mm. That's really all they ever show yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's it's always overcast and dark. Right? It's not a sunny place. Well, in the Enterprise, they showed it, it was a sunny place. Yeah. Could it be like Earth? There's sunny places. There's cold places. There's, <laughs> there's green places. There's mountainous places. I, I'd be interested to see what this show does with showing us that planet. I'm going to be kind of curious to like how they, where they take it. Um, and you know, are they just going to like jump into a cave and shoot some lava and then we just see, mm-hmm. you know, things going off and that's it? Didn't they show it in the preview? I thought, I thought, and it was like a red planet. And I was like, what? And, like, I remember looking at it. And I was like, I, it's not red. Well, the Klingons also don't look like they did. So they could, like, yeah. we, like we said, this is a visual reboot. So all bets are off. They could make Kronos really look however the hell they want to. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, again, like, uh, keeper of the cannon over here, mm. you know. If they blow up Kronos in this next episode, the keeper of the mm. cannon would have to... The keeper of the cannon is, ha- is going to <laughs> oh, have to open a can of whoop-ass on, mm. on these creators. That's yeah. how it's going to have to be. Like, presumably, Praxis is still intact at this point. Do you know what mm-hmm. Praxis is? No. So, Praxis is a moon of Kronos. That's their key energy production facility. It blows up in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. It's kind of an analogy to Chernobyl. Okay. That they overmine it and they don't take enough safety precautions and it ends up um, blowing up. And and that's what eventually leads to peace between the Klingons and the Federation because the Klingons can't afford this war machine. They have this huge environmental disaster and they have to put money into fixing that versus just fighting the Federation. Makes sense. Right? And that, But that doesn't happen until... for. That happens in twenty two nine in the twenty two nineties, and this is the twenty two fifties. So this is forty years before any of this mm. has happened. Okay, where is the show going in this? It, like, it, do you think they're going to end with a cliffhanger in the next episode, mm. or do you think they're going to wrap it all up in a bow? Hey. I mean, I, I I seem to think they're going to cliffhanger it. What I want to see them get to the point is like, I want to know who the damn captain of the ship is. I want to have a, like Saru's at this point. Oh what? no, no, Giorgio. That's such a trekky like, like, like yeah, like thing to say. Like I need to know who the captain is. It needs to fit back with the normal structure. Who's the lead role of this? You know, like I don't think that's kind of what I like about this show. Is like that doesn't really matter. You know, like the story is what's kind of driving it right now, right? Like, like that's what we're interested in more than all the theories were coming up rather who, than like who's who cap- Michael Burnham's story well no it's not just hers but it's also like you got the Mir story you got the Klingon like and the Vox stuff going on like there's all these theories that we can like attach ourselves to rather than like 
it's not like your consi- you know your traditional Star Trek episode or see like a series where you have like you know we're going to this planet and we're going to there oh this problem today no uh, I know I, I right? understand it's serialized but like we we can't seem to figure out who this captain is who's the lead of this show who's the first officer uh, who's the chief medical officer who's the chief engineer they're they, war they, they killed the flux. chief medical officer that's what they think about this show is they're willing to snap necks. And, 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 you know, like that's what they're willing to do in this Star Trek. They would never have done that. They never would have killed the Crusher like that in <laughs> TNG. Like that never would have happened. You know? No, <laughs> I, that's what I'm upset about. <laughs> <laughs> just snapped his neck. I was like, well, that happened. I was just like, oh, this is so different than Star, like regular old Star Trek. So, but they, they, like, I would assume they will replace him with somebody new. Oh, yeah. There was a medical officer in this episode. She doesn't have a name. We don't know. We don't even know. We'll what. get to know her. Well, Detmer didn't have a name until the last two episodes, so. Detmer's robot eye? Yeah, robot eye. Okay. And they said her name <laughs> twice again this episode, so that's four mentions in two episodes. I'm, I'm getting there with her. She's just, you know, I'm figuring her out. Uh, well, okay. And what, another question here was, like, there's a final exchange here between uh, Sarek and Burnham, right? And does it feel like a goodbye? Like, like they, don't they make reference to, like. So she said. Like, this could be the last time we ever see each other. And like I was saying earlier, Sarek... Lives for 200 years. He lives for, Well, he lives until the time of Picard, right? Because we know he meets Picard and deals with Picard and all that stuff. So he can't die unless... Bur- Are they going to kill Burnham in this next episode? Can you see that happening? No. No. Again. Not unless the show's over. If the show's over, then yeah, <laughs> they would kill Burnham. That would be pretty dumb. The only reason I was watching the show in the first place was because of Sonequa Martin, because I knew her from Walking Dead, and I thought she was a good actress. So, well, they got you though. So they, they she would she would they just got her for one season to hook you in. I have stopped watching shows when they kill main characters off before. Yeah. Yeah. Like Boardwalk Empire. I was done with that. Okay. Oh, who, well, then, when who died? When, I'm not going to do spoilers, when, but well, the, the, you know the, the main the guy, boy, the young the guy. Yeah. yeah. When he died, I was like, I watched two more oh, episodes. And oh, I was really? Like, yeah. After Steve Buscemi sucks. Actually, I think I pretty much stopped at the same. Same time, yeah, yeah. So there, they don't want to do that. But uh, like, yeah, I had the same thing with Dexter. I had to stop after they killed the main character. I was like, all right, this shows. Okay, so we're doing a death draft. Jeff gets the first pick. Nice. Who's most likely to die? Yes, in this next episode. Tyler. You think Ash Tyler? Yeah. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Uh, Georgiou. Josh, who are you taking? Lorel. You think Laurel dies in this next episode? That's the the only one I thought other than Tyler. I'm gonna take Robot Eye. <laughs> Robot Eye. What's Detmer. her name? What's her name? Detmer. 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 I think Detmer. it's Detmer. 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 All right. Who is most likely to come back? Go in the opposite way. It still sounds like resurrection. I I, I think we're seeing we're seeing some version of Lorca again. At some I point. I paid attention to uh, when Lorca was put into the, the the drive spore drive that he turned into little blue dots, definitely, which landed on Tilly's shirt. Yeah, I saw like. When he yeah, was... you said that that could be right. Yeah. Okay. He, uh, I noticed it was the same little blue dots. Hold on. Let's keep this death trap going. I'm going to go snake. I'm going to take the next pick. I'm going to also say. Saru. Oh, they're not going to kill him. No. He's like he's, the best character in the whole show. He's not dying. No way. Oh, he might be dying. No way. Is this a snake trap? Or are we going back the other way? Yeah, we'll go back the other way. Josh, you have the next pick. I know that everyone's telling me it can't happen, but I'm going to go with Sarek. <laughs> Somehow. If they kill Sarek, I'm going to lose my mind. Because I'm like, they, they, how, unless they, they're going to do time travel, there's no way to resolve that. Jane. I'm going to go with... Random and Dorian. Random and Dorian. <laughs> the one on the bridge? Yeah. That, guy, that dude's um, going to die. I'm going to take the Admiral. She's going down. I think of her. Admiral? Yeah. All she all. don't die. Nobody thinks they're going to kill Stamets? <laughs> no. They already went as far as they could to kill him. And without didn't kill, killing him? Without killing him, yeah. If they kill him now, it would be like, oh, really? Could you see them killing off the no. ops officer? Yeah, what's her name? I forget her name. Here's a question for you. Who's the chief engineer on the Discovery? Stamets. Stamets. It, 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 he yeah, is the yeah. chief engineer? Yeah. Okay. He seems to be the science officer science and officer, the yeah. engineer. Yeah, he seems to be multitasking quite a bit then. You know? Mm. <laughs> also, we forgot about Tilly. Oh, could they kill Tilly? No, not dying. Maybe. I oh. think they could kill her. She's been, Her role's been kind of reduced in the last few episodes. But I get, then again, usually before you kill someone, you make, them, you, you make people were, care about them if more. If they were to kill Tilly... 
Um, I think the, I think that could be interesting for Michael Burnham's character, for her arc into the next season, because her only friend ever. And she was sort of her mentor, like she was Tilly's mentor too. Right, and we never got to see her become a captain and all this kind of stuff. We did. She was a captain. Well, well in the mirror verse or whatever. No, exactly. Do we see any of the mirror? Discovery crew, like Tilly, from like Captain Tilly. Do we see that in the next? Do like did they survive? Not no. in not in the next episode. I don't think that they're showing up at all. But in the future, I could see them coming. That some of them got away on escape pods. Who knows? They were just captured say, by the Klingons. four seasons in till we see them again. Like uh, it just seems I weird guess. to me that they would just write that out. Oh, they're dead. Well, okay. So presumably, none of this mirror universe stuff ever becomes public knowledge it gets classified presumably it, unless like the discovery is destroyed in general and it never got back that because but kirk's not aware of the mirror universe it's not like common knowledge and even when they go to the mirror universe in d space nine they they think of kirk as being the first to go there so it's not these guys can't either talk about it georgia can never be ex, can never be exposed as the mirror georgia she will just be considered even if other characters know that Somehow that doesn't get become public knowledge. Mm-hmm. Keeper of the canon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any other predictions for next week? Other than it looks like George is going to blow up a planet and it's going to cause a moral conundrum. I can see Georgiou betraying them to the Klingons and then using them as her means to her end of getting back to the mirror universe. Because even though they're not human, I think that they're more in line with her ideals. Yeah, just being jerks. Yeah, exactly. And they also are like about their race over other races and things like that. So I could see her having a plan. She's going to get there. She's going to go talk to the Klingons be like, hey, the Discovery's here. They have the spore drive. I want you to let me use it and you can keep it. Well, <laughs> yeah, what if it's like Vok and Giorgio like head over to like a Klingon ship and then like they're ruling the Klingon Empire? And that's the end. Yeah, they could turn Giorgio. She could get anti Ash Tyler and she could become a Klingon and she could be like the Empress of the Klingons. Yeah, well, the whole thing is that the Klingons don't have, like, a central leader, right? Like, mm-hmm. they, they need one. They need one, but they don't seem to, at this point in their history, they don't seem to have one. So nobody's united. The Takuma was going to unite them, and the Takuma died, right? So who's the, there's no chancellor of the high council at this point. Michael Burnham killed Takuma, right? Yeah. Yeah. Shot him in the back. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> cowardly. That's, you know, Federation way. Yeah, she was pissed off, though. Yeah. Well, yeah he, he did, he had just killed Georgiou. Uh, my guess is they wrap it up. They wrap it. Everything's wrapped up in a bow by the end of this. Maybe next first episode. episode, second season, more Klingon, and then we're done. And then we're moving on. To what? Then episode of the week. I hope so. I don't think they're going to do that. I think no? there's going to be a huge cliffhanger at the end of the season. Cliffhanger, <laughs> yes, but I think it'll be wrapped up uh, quickly. Second season, and they'll move on from the Klingons into some new arc. Yep, that's my guess. I, I like that. Okay. I hope. I think Let's see I'm who, tired that, of the, the subtitles. We'll, 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 we'll find out next week when we uh, cover Star Trek Discovery Episode 15. Title undetermined at this point, I believe. Oh, um, I'll figure it out. But. Anyway, uh, we hope you've enjoyed your time with us on Live Long and Podcast, and we will talk to you next week. I'm Dave Mater signing off, along with my handsome friends. <laughs> the, the Jays. The Jays. The Quiet Jays. Until next time. (laughs) Until next time. (laughs) Bye. Live long and podcast.